now coming to the first phase which is the vascular phase here there is a injury to the vessel wall so what is going to happen this endothelial cells will release endothelin and cause local vasoconstriction so by causing local vasoconstriction it will try to reduce the bleeding and another important thing is exposed collagen fibers here the collagen which is here gets exposed this two things happen in the vascular phase localized vasoconstriction by endothelin and later the exposed collagen fibers this is vascular phase coming to the next phase which is called the platelet phase or primary hemostasis the first thing which happens is your platelet gets added to the site of injury that is the first one and second is this platelet which is normally this shape before 1990 here you can see the mortality with congenital heart disease is around 30% so the people going into adulthood with congenital heart disease was very minimal in after 2000 you can see the advances in cardiac surgery and intensive care has brought the mortality with congenital heart disease to hardly to less than 3% so you can see lot of people in the adult wood with congenital heart disease the clinical implication of this diagram is more and more people with congenital heart disease will survive in adult wood and they will be coming for non cardiac surgery here you can see the incidence of congenital heart disease growing into adult wood is progressively increasing over a period of time the most common congenital disease which goes into adult wood and it is non operated includes atrial septal defect which is very common followed by ventricular septal defect patent ductus arteriosus eisenmenger syndrome where there is a reversal of uh, left to right shunt let us move into the anatomy of aorta first then we'll move into abdominal aorta the aorta originates from the left ventricle as the ascending thoracic aorta then it continues as arch of aorta where it gives rise to cerebral vessels then continues down as descending thoracic aorta it pierces the diaphragm and enters as abdominal aorta before bifurcating into iliac artery this is one of the largest vascular structure in the body supplying major organs of the thoracic and the abdominal cavity about one third of the aneurysm arises from the thoracic aorta and two third arises from the abdominal aorta of the abdominal aorta 20% is supra renal and 80% is infra renal coming to dual chamber here you have a lead which goes into the right ventricle and another one which goes via coronary sinus into the left ventricle and the third lead goes into the right atrium here you have a right atrial biventricular pacing that is like a normal conduction system this type of pacing usually used in heart failure you get the rhythm going in dual chamber you have one lead in the right atrium and another lead green one which goes into the right ventricle here you have right atrium and right ventricle it paces it sends the cardiac action potential and it captures and convert that into a mechanical contraction coming to pacing what is atrial pacing okay here you have a spike just before the p wave so you stimulate the right atrium and produce a spike on the ecg just before the p wave that is the atrial pacing so you have different fluids and you have different people with different fluid requirement and you have different type of surgeries and per se surgery can cause halted hemodynamics and injury to the tissues and lead to volume deficit so you are going to have different surgery different people and different fluid is there so how you are going to match this three you have to be a magician to do that and anesthesiologist is a perfect guy to do it okay and you need 10 nets and 20 hands to deal with the situation and an anesthesiologist being a multitasking master you should handle it with ease 
So it all started in 1832 when Dr. Thomas Latta, okay, lot of people was dying in cholera due to fluid imbalance. Lot of fluid was lost and they lost because of the patient life was lost due to dehydration. So he started injecting intravenous saline in 1832 and he saved lot of patients. So this